Hello and welcome back to Drinking About Birds. Today we have this Merlot from Black Hawk Winery in California, which is illustrated with what appears to be a falcon. This is a California wine, so I'm going to assume it's an American species of falcon. Beyond that, I can't narrow it down exactly, um, but there's a couple of traits that can help us identify it as a falcon generally, and I think we can narrow it down to one or two species that commonly occur in North America. Um, I had some other stuff going on this week, so I didn't have time to really research a particular species in detail, so I'm just going to give you sort of an overview of falcons as a family, and I will tell you about some of the falcons that we have here in North America. Falcons are pretty cool. They are one of the major groups of diurnal raptors. There is about 65 species of them worldwide, of which we can see about seven in North America, although you would have to travel to quite different parts of North America to see them all. Uh, so falcons are found worldwide. Stereotypically, they tend to be sort of speedy pursuit predators. They tend to have these very long wings with fairly pointed tips uh, and with a fairly high aspect ratio. And they tend to have uh, medium to long tails. They have the standard raptor characteristics of sharp talons and a hooked bill uh, for consuming prey. Falcons notably have this sort of tooth on the uh, cutting edge of the upper bill, and that can be used to identify them. Some of them are quite generalist in their prey and habitat preferences, like the peregrine uh, can feed on a huge variety of prey. Others have much narrower preferences, and so uh, you can find them only in particular types of habitat, and some of them are quite specialized in terms of what prey they will take. Um, there's a a genus of falcons that are specialized to prey almost exclusively on snakes. There's others that are very insectivorous, especially the smaller falcons, whereas larger ones uh, will take uh, more vertebrate prey. Some of them live in fairly dense forest, and those ones tend to be more like accipiters in terms of their uh, body, their build. Uh, they tend to have shorter and more rounded wings for maneuverability and longer tails, whereas Falcons that live in open country tend to have these long wings for high-speed flight uh, because they tend to pursue prey over uh, considerable distances. So a few traits help us identify this as a falcon. Uh, the eye color, believe it or not, is an important trait uh, among North American raptors. Falcons tend to have very dark eyes and it has a ring of lighter flesh around it. Um, so the, the appearance of bare flesh on uh, the face or other parts of birds is an important char identifying characteristic. Um, it's often around the face, around the bill, um, above the base of the bill. It's typically known as the sear. Uh, there's probably terms for where it appears other places, but we won't worry too much about that. Um, beyond the eyes, it has these uh, dark malar stripes. So malar, you can think of as a mustache, uh, kind of like mine, um, but that uh, dark marking in that area is very typical of falcons. The general shape of it is quite falcon-like. Falcons are known for having sort of an ice cream cone shape when they're perched because uh, they have these broad shoulders and then sort of a long tapering tail. Um, the tail is long and tapered uh, and finely banded which helps us, us to narrow it down to just a few species. Um, there's no bird called a black hawk by the way. Uh, as far as I know that's not even a, a nickname for any particular species of bird. There are some birds in the family Accipitridae, uh, which are called black hawks, um, but not as a single word. So I don't know exactly what they were going for with this. Uh, I looked online and it looked like they have some other labels uh, that are older where they had what's clearly an, a bald eagle on them. So um, I'm just going to guess that this winery is playing sort of fast and loose with their ornithology, and that's okay. We don't have to worry about uh, rigor in that department. but. <clears throat> Probably the best known of falcons, if we don't count fictional spaceships, is the peregrine falcon. Uh, peregrine literally means wanderer, and that's very appropriate for this species because it has an extremely wide range geographically. Uh, it's probably the most widespread of any uh, bird, uh, is its natural range, and uh, it's probably up there with just vertebrates in general, uh, besides humans. Peregrines also of course have the distinction of being the fastest animal alive. Um, 
at least they were until humans invented planes and even for a little while after that um, they're known for these incredible high-speed dives where they can reach speeds of up to like 240 miles per hour um, and that is one thing that they do to capture prey. Um, they gain a lot of altitude, they find some prey that looks tasty much farther below them, uh, and they just go into a high-speed dive, and yeah, they, uh, they reach pretty incredible speeds. They are not the fastest bird in uh, just level flapping flight. There's a few that uh, outpace them there, including some other falcons, but uh, they are pretty speedy, just uh, not at the top. Peregrines, you can recognize uh, by the fact that they're a pretty large falcon. Uh, they're about crow-sized, which is pretty large as falcons go. They tend to have sort of this dark slaty gray topside, and underneath, as adults, they have dark uh, barring horizontally, and as juveniles, they have longitudinal streaking on the breast and belly. There are a bunch of subspecies because they are so widely distributed. They underwent a pretty dramatic population crash in the mid-20th century, uh, largely due to the use of DDT and other organochloride pesticides, and those pesticides caused their eggs to have much thinner shells than they should, and that decreased nest survival uh, to the point where uh, the populations in some areas were completely extirpated. Uh, populations in others just uh, dropped to very low levels. These pesticides were banned later, and uh, along with some reintroduction and captive breeding programs, that has helped peregrine falcons to recover. Um, but the reintroduction efforts uh, to increase genetic diversity brought in birds that were not totally within their native range, and so it kind of mixed up all of the subspecies that we have in North America. So. If you see a peregrine falcon in North America, it's probably not possible to uh, conclusively say it's this or that subspecies, but that's fine. Um, peregrines are also an awesome example of urban wildlife. In the wild, they typically nest on like ledges in cliffs, but in urban areas, they can nest just on ledges on the sides of buildings, and one of their preferred prey sources is just the feral rock pigeon that we have you know, worldwide, certainly all over North America, uh, peregrines love to chow down on some pigeons, and so they have been very successful uh, living in cities. Probably the second most widespread falcon in North America is the American kestrel. Kestrel is a term for smallish falcons that are typically sort of rust red in color, and that include hovering as part of their uh, foraging strategy. So they will sort of face into the wind and through a combination of flapping and gliding, they will keep their head in almost exactly the same spot to more effectively search for prey. Um, American kestrels are actually probably not super related to other kestrels, of which there are probably about a dozen species. Uh, it's just another great example of convergent evolution uh, that they've uh, come to resemble uh, the kestrels that are found in the old world. But they are pretty widespread within North and Central and South America. In addition to the hovering, they like to hunt from perches. They mostly eat uh, small arthropods and vertebrates, so uh, mice, lizards, potentially small birds, that sort of thing, uh, and just lots of bugs. American kestrels are very snazzy little birds. Uh, they show plumage dimorphism between males and females, in addition to the sexual dimorphism that's just standard for all raptors. Falcons included. Uh, the males have blue on their wings, whereas females don't. The females are more thoroughly barred on the back, uh, and on the belly they have a pretty extensive streaking, whereas the males have uh, sort of a buffy or orange breast and just black spotting. Uh, you often see kestrels perched on power lines uh, or telephone lines, and they have this habit of flicking their tail up and down uh, when they're perched just looking for prey or just hanging out. Uh, and kestrels are really small too, they're like uh, the size of maybe a robin or a jay, um, very small for raptors. Only a little bit larger than kestrels is merlins, and I forgot to look up the origin of the name merlin, I'm really sorry about that, but uh, I don't know if the wizard was named after the bird or vice versa or neither, could be a lot of things. 
Uh, Merlins are sort of similar to Kestrels. They're a small falcon. They are quite different in their habits. Uh, they mostly hunt other birds, uh, mostly small songbirds, but they are also notoriously feisty and aggressive, and they will go after larger birds just kind of for fun, apparently. They are a little more drab. They're, they tend to be fairly dark overall. Uh, they have the Mellar stripe, which tends to be fairly weak in this species, and they have extensive streaking on the belly and breast, and on the back they can be light gray to almost black. Um, there's a few different subspecies that you can see across North America. They are found that was known as a circumpolar distribution, so they are found uh, throughout the northern hemisphere, including uh, Europe and Asia, but mostly in northerly latitudes. And they breed farther north in the summer, and then they uh, are a winter visitor to the, uh, the lower 48 United States. So the Merlin you can identify as a small falcon, fairly dark overall with very, a lot of uh, streaking uh, on the breast and belly. They also have this very distinctive tail pattern for a falcon, which is alternating thick, dark, and thin white bands. There are three subspecies that you can see in North America. There's the taiga in the east, the prairie, which is sort of in the Great Plains area, and the black, which is on the Pacific coast. So in the western United States, and in western North America more generally, you can see the prairie falcon, which is almost as big as the peregrine, and you can really think of it as sort of a peregrine that's been adapted to very open spaces in arid habitat. So it lives in not just prairie, but also a sort of desert, chaparral, sagebrush habitat, um, sort of throughout uh, the western half of North America. So um, I think it's a pretty strong contender for this particular bird uh, that we see on this wine label, but it's possible that we're going for something else. Prairie falcons tend to eat uh, mostly mammals. Uh, they're specialized on ground squirrels in particular, but they are very opportunistic and they will feed on a variety of prey, uh, just kind of whatever they can find. So peregrine, kestrel, merlin, and prairie falcon are the four species that have sort of any kind of extensive breeding range within uh, the lower 48 United States. There's some other sort of outliers that you can see in very restricted range and potentially just at certain times of year. So the crested caracara, caracaras are sort of an outlier within falcons. They are definitely falcons taxonomically, um, like they, they are very closely related. They fit in perfectly uh, with the broader group uh, genetically, but they do not behave like other falcons. They uh, morphologically are more like buzzards or hawks or vultures. They tend to have fairly broad wings. They spend a lot more time soaring or just perched and looking for prey. Uh, and ecologically, they really are more like vultures. Uh, crested characters in particular will go after a lot of carrion, although they will also hunt live prey. And they have a very striking appearance. I always think they kind of look like Sam the Eagle from the Muppets, because uh, they have this sort of black top uh, and this very large and severe beak uh, and just facial appearance. But yeah, they are found in the U.S. Uh, really only in Texas and Florida and along the Gulf Coast, but they are much more widespread throughout Central and South America. Uh, I've seen them in Costa Rica, and yeah, they're found kind of much more broadly than within the U.S., but if you want to see them in the U.S., you'll have to go south. The Aplomato falcon, similarly, is found in a pretty restricted range within the U.S. Uh, you mostly only see them in the Rio Grande Valley in South Texas and into uh, New Mexico and maybe a little bit of Southeast Arizona. They are quite striking. They have a very distinctive plumage pattern, uh, but they're also kind of inconspicuous. They tend to find a well-hidden perch and hunt by making sort of sallying flights out from there. And they mostly feed on other birds, I believe. Uh, and in their habits, at least, they're kind of more like an exhibitor. Uh, they tend to make these sort of short pursuit flights. 
and they have a very long tail to go along with that, uh, sort of to help with maneuverability. Lastly, we have the Jeer Falcon, or Jeer Falcon. I don't know how other people pronounce it. I say Jeer Falcon, but it is the largest of the falcons. It is found primarily in the Arctic and subarctic. Uh, it breeds, again, it has a circumpolar distribution, so it breeds in northerly latitudes throughout North America and Europe and Asia. It is kind of a specialized hunter. It feeds mostly on ptarmigan, which are a group of grouse, and so they're kind of chicken-like birds with feathered toes that hang out in cold latitudes. You will not see them in the U.S. in summer, at least in the lower 48, um, but every winter some number of individuals will migrate south and partly that's driven by prey availability. Uh, it might also be uh, non-territorial individuals being pushed out, uh, not being able to find enough food. But they will migrate down into mainland Canada, definitely, uh, but also just sort of the northerly United States. They are very much a species of open country, and they're much more of an active pursuit predator than like a peregrine is. Uh, so in addition to ptarmigan, they will also hunt uh, ducks and various mammals of sizes ranging up to like snowshoe hares. Uh, Jeer falcons are part of the uh, quote unquote hierofalcon complex. So this is a group of four species. There's the Jeer falcon, the soccer falcon, the lanner, and the lagar falcon. And these four species are super closely related to the point that you could really consider them the same species and just different geographic populations. It's thought that they diverged quite recently in evolutionary time, so like maybe 150,000 years ago. And now they have mostly non-overlapping geographic ranges, but if you bring them into close proximity, they will readily interbreed and produce hybrids. And that is often done in uh, falconry, just to produce hybrids for various characteristics. This winery, I know almost nothing about it. Uh, I just happened to spot it while I was browsing at my local liquor store, and the illustration is really nice. Uh, it's very readily identifiable as a falcon, but if you search for Blackhawk Winery, mostly what comes up is this other winery that's in Indiana, definitely not California, so uh, I was not able to find out much information about this one. It costs like nine bucks for this bottle, which is not bad. And as my lows go, I like this one. It's quite nice. Um, sort of a, a basic wine, I guess, but it's uh, quite tasty and I would definitely drink more of it. And I might, because I like the bottle. So that is sort of the long and short of Falcons. Um, I'm sure there's a ton of stuff that I forgot to cover, but like I said, I didn't have a ton of time for extensive research uh, for this episode. but. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed hearing about it, and I hope you will join me next time. And uh, until then, take care, and yeah, this has been Drinking About Birds. My name is Eck. Good night. <laughs>